Everybody, thanks for joining today. Tom's going to start with an opening statement, then we'll go to questions. We'll start with Zach and uh, John Blau. You go second. Go ahead, Tom. Good morning to everyone. Appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, just uh, really encouraged by the first four days of practice. This was our scheduled uh, off day um, that we wanted to be able to have, I think, with where we're at um, and, and coming off the, the last six weeks um, of the summer. Felt like that four days is a good rotation to go through and, and put us on moving forward uh, for our guys and the workload and be able to keep them progressing. And uh, we, I thought we had a really good, um, you know, kind of gradual ramp it up each day, even in reps, and really relied on Coach Wellman's expertise from the NFL and the time he spent there and studying uh, fall camp models and how you um, allow your bodies to, to grow with the camp and, and not be able to do too much too soon. I think even all the more so with what uh, you know, we had to, to deal with going through the summer and while that was chopped up. So um, realize there's a lot of speculation, a lot of things going on right now. Um, but uh, just as always, nothing changes for me. Uh, we don't blink. Uh, we focus on what we know. We focus on today. And that's been our message to our guys. And that's no different. So um, I can't control all the things that go on around us. I know that, uh, as I've always stated from day one, that the uh, medical um, experts are the ones telling us what to do, and we'll listen to them, and we'll always do what's best for player safety. So uh, bottom line is our guys have really responded well, love the focus and the effort and attention to detail of our guys. We've got a, a mature football team that, that's hungry and really um, – excited to spend time with them and coach them. So it's been a really good first four days and excited to get back on the field tomorrow. Questions? All right, Zach, and then John. Tom, you've talked about kind of at length wanting to foster kind of an open door communication, you know, kind of policy with your players, just kind of in all things. We've seen this, this push, I guess, very recently sort of from, from athletes saying they really want, to, to, to find a way to have a season. Is that something that guys individually have expressed to you? And is it something that guys maybe have expressed a desire to be part of that, that larger voice, I suppose, in supporting the idea of playing the season? Well, you know, I haven't had anybody come to me personally and just say, Hey coach, I want to meet and talk about that. Um, I noticed that and I'm very um, active on social media in regards to watching our guys uh, what they put out, I think it reveals a lot about what's going on in their heads. And so, um, you know, for me, I, you know, a lot of our guys have put out about wanting to play and, and, uh, cause I know they want to play, you know, and our coaches want to play and, and, uh, you know, we, uh, yeah, so we support them that as always, but no, it's not been, uh, I haven't had a bunch of guys reach out to me about it. I mean, I think they've showed that by how focused they are every day and how hard they've worked and, and, uh, amidst very difficult circumstances, they continue to, um, just do what we ask them to do. And, and uh, we've been very, very specific about, you know, what do you do to mitigate the risks involved when you have a situation like this and with the mask and all the different things that we're doing in practice and out of practice and in meetings and, and in the weight room and all those things haven't changed. So, but yeah, I think that you just seen across the country that a lot of guys, you know, have a strong desire and they've, they've worked really hard to get to this point and, and uh, um, just want to create a great environment and a safe environment for them to be able to, to do what they love to do. All right, John, then Matt Weaver. I guess just kind of building on that question, I mean, from a devil's advocate uh, position, obviously 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids, I mean, they do have that desire to play. I mean, even with, you know, the issue of concussions, we think about, you know, if a kid gets hit hard, they want to get back on the field. I mean, how much does this put everything on the onus on the coaches, the administrators, on the conferences, everybody to figure this out? I mean, how much do you it, Yeah, it does. And that's why I say, you know, you, you can say, hey, they want to play. And I get it. Sure, they want to play, you know. and uh, But that's why, you know, you balance that with, you know, we follow the advice of the medical experts and that's really what it's going to come down to. And, and those in leadership roles making these decisions and it, which hasn't been any different from, from the beginning, you know, we're going to follow that lead. And, and uh, um, as long as everything is, is, you know, we do what we're told to do, you know, we went through and we started and we progressed, we started last Thursday. So we, you know, with a, a Friday night kickoff on September 4th, we were able to start on uh, a day earlier than everyone else that's not playing until the fifth. And so, 
this was day four yesterday and uh, we got in pads day three like we were supposed to and then we're told to go back to helmets only so that's what we did and, and it looks like we'll be in helmets only tomorrow as well so we'll do whatever the parameters are you know, we're, we're laid out for us we'll follow those and and uh, but at the end of the day and i've said it from the beginning you know as long as the doctors say we can do this we're going to do it you know and if they they tell us that we can't then we won't no matter how bad we want to play you know whether no matter how bad i want to play or the kids want to play you know so there's uh you know to me it's got to be data driven and uh, as long as that's the case and we follow that then you you feel good about it go ahead matt hey coach how you doing I'm doing good. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to actually ask you a football question. So <laughs> we have a little bit different. Uh, um, I know it's early on. It's only a few, pra what, four practices in, I think for you guys, and you really haven't gotten the kind of meat potatoes at camp, but any newcomers or even redshirt freshmen guys that sat out last year that have kind of caught your eye or you think, you know, if there is a season, you know, could be, could be a guy that gets on the field for you and, and, and helps you out. Yeah, I think, you know, when you go through, uh, especially you think about the true freshmen that just got here, um, a few came mid-year, so they had a little bit of a jump on things, and you had a chance to get four spring practices with those guys. But but the, the crew that came in over the summer uh, that it really hasn't been here very long, um, just to kind of talk about some of those guys, Javon Swin is a guy that really – um, has been a pleasant surprise to me. You know, he played both sides of the football in high school and, and really recruited him as, as really either a corner or a receiver and, and uh, list him as an athlete. And, and it just really, um, yeah, he's been he, – you can just tell he's got a tremendous amount of uh, talent um, hasn't played a, t a ton of just pure receiver. So learning how to play the position, uh, I think, has been um, really um, – going to be a huge part of his growth for sure but just the natural ball skills just some guys just have that the ability and then getting in and out of his breaks and still doesn't know exactly what he's doing yet but he's impressed uh bryson bonds at, at, at safety really uh man i tell you what tremendous habits he has already you know you come from the state of texas sometimes that's that, that's um expected because they they play so much football and they they do so many things that has a collegiate structure to it from a high school perspective. So he, he's brought all that with him. He's extremely um, sharp in the, in the meeting rooms and understands the system already in, in a very good way, although he still doesn't have the big picture view yet. Nobody does at this point. But, but boy, his practice habits, his effort, a very good athlete. Uh, really been impressed with him. Uh, I think Deshaun Brown is a red shirt, you know, uh, is a guy that's really flashed to me and been very – encouraged by him and in his growth from last year to this year you know and he's a guy I have high expectations for um really encouraged by him I think Tim Baldwin's another one I know he came mid-year but boy I tell you he's really to me has really grown from you know coming in January until now just almost looks like a different player than he did even those first four days of spring Ty Wise is another one came you know and I think you know, you got you know, when you come in the in the in January that is such a unique situation that I think people don't really realize how challenging that truly is. And I think I've said this before, but when my own son did it and the way he responded to it and how he was like, man, this is, this is really hard. And he was a, a kid from a, a good high school program, multiple ones and being a coach's kid. And it was still a little overwhelming. So I think that, you don't you forget that. So both those guys, both Ty and Tim came here and they're, they're completely different players now. Um, and I've really been encouraged and impressed by Ty's growth from, you know, being here in January and then leaving and then training and then coming back and just really uh, been encouraged by him. And I just feel like that he's a guy, you know, AJ Barner's another one. I've mentioned him already before, but, but uh, really a uh, very, very talented player that hasn't played a ton of tight end. You know, he was a linebacker in high school, played a little bit of tight end, but, but uh, just big. He even grew over the summer, you know, comes here and we had to even increase his, his change of sizes on some of the stuff because he got bigger and, and uh, he's still trim, but just long and athletic and just very well-rounded tight end that can run and block and, and catch the ball. And, and he's, he's just picks things up quickly. And so, you know, those guys to me, and I could probably talk about others, but have really, uh, you know, I feel like have have really truly grown uh, either since they got here. Dexter Williams, another one I could say, hey man, he's really you know come back a more confident player, uh, even though he was here in January. And guys that uh, we need to step up, and those those young guys that kind of just pop out to me right now. All right, Tom Bruder, Jeff Rabjohns. Good morning, Coach. 
Good morning. The, uh, one of the uh, things I wanted to ask you about, because I've been sort of hearing a bit of a backlash about today, is but you've spoke glowingly since June about how you guys have been communicating with Dr. Rink and the medical staff and how all that has gone so well and everything. A lot of people have been saying that, you know, with all that's gone on in the world, there was just really no way this could football season could happen anyway. But it seems like from what you've said and what Scott has said and, what is, and obviously we can't talk to them, that there was always at least a plan to go forward to make it work if it could. And it, that's correct, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, as I kind of go through and, and you don't really know until you go do something. And so you just go through and, you know, we had our challenges over the summer with, with some situations reg regarding this, which is you somewhat expect and you got to learn and grow and, and you learn from other people. And, and, uh, you know, but now we've got in, you know, to, to practices and have our guys here. And we did you know, the five days of, of OTAs leading up to fall camp, which I thought were excellent. It's one of the best things I've ever seen us do. I've talked to many, many head coaches across the country about it and how, man, just how good it is to do something like that. It's in a very controlled setting and you get a chance to do it right before, you know, we started fall camp and just felt like it was a tremendously valuable time, but we were all together and lifting and running and doing those meetings and, and doing the walkthroughs. And, and then the first four days of camp and, and uh, it's been, everything has gone, you know, really, really well. And the guys have kind of got in a flow and a rhythm and, and uh, haven't had guys, you know, showing up and, and having issues with their health. And, and so, and yet we're still around each other. And, and uh, yeah, we haven't had, you know, we had the one, one uh, shoulder pads practice where we, where we would do some thud tempo, which means you don't take guys to the ground, but you're, you're having contact and you're blocking and you're tackling and, and, and with everybody staying on their feet and, and uh, doing those specific drills as well as some, some uh, O versus D work. So, you know, up to this point, like I said, we just, uh, you don't know until you actually go physically start doing it. And I feel like that, you know, the things that we're seeing right now, everything I know and what I've seen these last four days has been, been very positive. Rabbi and Kevin Brockway. Hey, good morning, Coach. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Good morning. Hey, I was curious. What did you think when you saw the We Want to Play movement last night kind of pop up from a lot of different places? Yeah, I saw it kind of, you know, like I said, I'm pretty active on social media. So I, I kind of live on Twitter for recruiting purposes. And, uh, and so you just see things and, and uh, you know, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of an upswell of, of guys just saying, hey, you know, I, I – and I think you've, you've seen guys, they, they've been – They've been around their teams these last, you know, few couple weeks, probably more so than they have before. And you get into a practice flow and you start saying, hey, we can, you know, we got this, you know, very, all these protocols in place and we, we learn to trust those protocols. And I think even just as we go through practice and we, we I, I, you know, it's hard to believe I'm doing this, but during practice, I'm talking about, hey, make sure your mouth is covered, make sure you're, you know, you got your, uh, you know, gator up or your your mask is on and and in just different ways of you know because we really have three different ways for guys to protect this part of their face to keep the droplets from being spread and you know we have the built-in splash guard it's clear or you have a cloth one that's across your face those are both on your face mask or you have a player may choose to use a gator you know or a mask underneath and you have to put that on and then put your chin strap on over it so just making sure you know so i'm going around making sure guys have all that on which is crazy but that's just what we got to do and so it's how you mitigate the risk but just so i think guys have realized hey we, we can do this you know and so but once again you know i I'm not in a position to, to make these decisions. So um, I have coach in front of my name, not doctor in front of my name. And uh, so I, I just feel like that, that, but, but from the world that we live in and what we're seeing every day with our players. And, and I think that's where, you know, there's definitely concerns and, and I, and I get that. And, and so, but I think the players now kind of getting in the flow and seeing how it's working of actually playing real football with all this, they, they realize that, that, there's been a lot of positives, you know, these last few days. So I think that's probably even caused more of that to be uh, even stated. So I don't know everybody's motives or anything, but I just know that, that our guys feel really good about it and, 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 and looking forward to moving forward. All right, Kevin, then Rick Bozich. Hey, Coach, having to go from pads and practice on Saturday to not pads on Sunday, I know you, you try to have a lot of these things mapped up. How much of an adjustment was that, and how much of an adjustment is that, you know, kind of going forward, not having contact until, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's an adjustment, you know, but I think it kind of fits the narrative that's been this this whole process is that, man, you got to be ready to make 
make adjustments and make changes at the last second. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. And so we just focus on today and then they tell us what we got to do today. And then we're going to make adjustments that affect the way we're going to practice the next day. And so, you know, we got that call, you know, later on in the day after we had just finished up a first padded practice. And then, yeah, you'd love to be able to continue to progress with your pads. And, and, uh, but we made adjustments and we modified what we did and, and uh, our guys have become, you know, they're pretty resilient about stuff like that. So you just, uh, you know, you don't blink. You don't get all focused on what you don't have or what you can't do. You focus, okay, now how can we make this? How can we prepare? And so, you know, I kind of, the way I practiced it to our guys was, you know, I gave an example in our team meeting about uh, the Kodak camera company, you know, and, and uh, I gave an illustration where, you know, back when I was a kid growing up and that was a big deal. And then uh, you get the eighties and then the nineties and, and then they start having some, you know, uh, other people started, uh, you know, competing for the digital camera world. Well, and then they went bankrupt in 2012, you know, and it's like, so where'd they go from being one of the top five companies in the whole United States of America to being bankrupt in 2012? Well, you know what, as the, the, as I share with our team, they weren't, willing to adapt okay they kind of say we're going to do it the way we've always done it and and now they don't exist anymore so i said hey we're going to have to adapt we're going to have to find a way and this is what i told our guys we're going to find a way to practice at a high level which is our helmets on or maybe just with with spiders on or maybe we're going to have to do things different than we've ever done in the past but we gotta be willing to do that and so we just said hey this is how we're going to figure it out and every single day we're going to learn more things and we're going to grow and we're going to figure out the best way to keep you safe and to prepare you at a high level to be able to compete in the Big Ten. And so that's how we present it to our guys. And uh, we're going to mitigate risk every way we can. And, and there's, this is what you do to, to, to mitigate those risks on a daily basis. And when you leave us, and as long as we continue to do that, we're going to practice in pads, no pads, helmets only, whatever they tell us to do, we're going to make it work, and we're going to keep getting better. All right, Rick and then Sammy Jacobs. Yeah, hi, Tom. Thanks for doing this. Um, the, the medical people, as you mentioned, are the ones who are going to make the decision, which is as it should be. But how much do they talk to you about what you see and what you think? And when they do, what do you tell them? Well, you know, when I say, you know, we're in daily communication with our medical staff here. And so to me, it's constant. You know, I'm saying, OK, hey, what do you see when you're out of practice? What can we do better? What do we need to work on? You know, hey, OK, you talk about this. Keep these guys apart over here. Make sure you're doing this. You know, just keep, you know, the big thing has been, hey, just keep reminding them about keeping the face covering off, you know. And I know it's, it's easy to go in, even as a coach. I know I wear, you start yelling and it always it falls down and you just kind of, it's obviously easier not to have one on, but you just got to adjust. And so it's that constant communication. And, and they alert us to things that they're concerned about and, we, and then they communicate with others. And, and so it's just, I think the biggest thing to, to say would be constant communication uh, about how can we continue to make sure, because I want to make sure that they're seeing things, you know, because I'm in the middle of it and I'm out there coaching and I, and I want to make sure that I'm seeing the right things. And if I, they see something I don't see, then I address it with our team and with our coaching staff. And so it's just been constant that way. And, uh, you know, and to me, it's like, they feel, and we, we've talked, they feel like that, you know, this is something that we can continue to work through and, and uh, you know, make it work, you know. But once again, that's just uh, – all I can tell you is what I deal with here on our campus. I obviously communicate with other coaches as well. But um, I do feel like that uh, there's a lot of things to all this. But we're working really hard to, to work together. But there's no question it is totally based on what the medical professionals tell us to do. And when they tell us to do something, if it's different than what we're doing it, then we do it. If it's something we got to get better at, then we, we get better at it. And uh, we're just working together to, to keep our players safe and, and get them ready. All right, Sammy, then Charlie Clifford. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good, buddy. Good seeing you. Good seeing you, too. Uh, Coach, is there anything that you've learned over the past six months uh, or so since COVID hit that – when things return to normal that you might adapt to your regular practice or strategy of preparing? Yeah, I think this, I think, uh, um, the, the zoom concept, um, is intriguing to me and how we can, uh, better utilize our time as coaches even. Um, and, and maybe you can, uh, even as, as the weekend goes, you can be able to, um, you know, basically maximize your use of technology to be able to not live in the office. You know, I think that's uh, always a 
personal balance, you know, not necessarily always just for me, but I'm talking about for our assistant coaches and some guys have young kids and they, many of our coaches are married and, and have a spouse and family. And, and I, they, I get that there's a, a time demand in doing all this, but I do think that there's a, you know, you want to take advantage of technology and you want to be able, so that's something I've said, you know, as this whole thing has kind of evolved, I never heard of zoom. It, it was on my phone. It was on my iPad and I didn't even know what it was, you know, never had used it one time before COVID-19. And so then we found ourselves now, granted, I use it more than I, probably would love to use it in the future, but, but I think, but to have it as a mechanism to use, to help us communicate and have meetings um, and not necessarily to, to socially distance, but just to be able to have guys to be able to maximize their time, even especially on the weekends, probably more than anything. Uh, I, I think also too, you're always looking for better ways to, to, to practice. You know, I, I think that in, in this day and age of the game has gotten so violent because the players are getting so big and so strong and so fast and the collisions are such a at such a level I think the more ways we can creatively practice to eliminate those major collisions uh in the game in, in practice uh, probably help you they help your your bodies of your players so I'm kind of interested to see how that kind of helps us maybe grow into how we practice moving forward uh when we maybe learn more creative ways to to eliminate um, you know, the, the ex excessive shots on the body, but still get your body ready to, to tackle and block for four hours on, on game day, you know? So I think those are probably the two key things that kind of stick out to me. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other things you go through and we'll, and we'll, we'll sit back and we'll say, Hey, what did we learn that we can do better at with our guys? And, but I think if I think the probably the biggest thing of all though, it's not necessarily a change, but it just, it's been a great lesson to how valuable and how critical relationships are and spending time with people because when they can't be around the people that you're close with, it, it, it's not the same. And, and we crave that relationship building and, and the players need it. We need it. They need it with each other, need it with us. And uh, you know, we're relational people and that's how we're, that's how we're built, you know, some more so than others, but, but I think being a part like it's been, it's, it's probably been the most difficult thing. All right, Charlie, and then we'll wrap with Bob Kravitz. Hey, Coach, thanks for the time. Um, I hope this isn't the case, but if the season is moved, have you been given any indication what the next few months may look like in terms of what you are able to do? You know, honestly, we have not. You know, I don't know that that's really been um, a major point of discussion. Uh, we've been so focused in on how do we get ready for this season and how do we make this season work. Uh, but I think like anything else, when, if that's, you know, unfortunately, if, it, if that were to happen, then you just have to put all your energy into that because, you know, there's no question you, you would want to make sure you had a very, very good plan um, to, to be able to make it something positive, you know, because, you know, my whole thing is, you know, once again, I'm not making that decision. So I, it's something I can't control, but I can control my response to it. And that's what we so focus on so much, even as a coach and as a player, you know, even in, a, in, in life in general, is how do you respond to events in your life? Because that response really determines how things turn out, you know, and so to respond the right way is critical in both from a psychological perspective and then physically, what are we going to do? So um, I'm assuming if that's what we're presented with, then we'll really, you know, sit down and hash it out and figure out this is what we're going to do. Uh, but like right now, our energy has been on, Hey, how can we practice better tomorrow and, and, and get our guys, you know, keep them safe and get them prepared. All right, Bob, last one. Hey, Hey Tom. Hey, Tom. Um, good, good. Thank you. Um, if the speculation is correct and they do decide to cancel uh, uh, fall sports tomorrow, how would you feel about uh, playing in the spring uh, a season in the spring? And if so, what kinds of challenges would that pose uh, for the season beyond that? Yeah. Wow. I really haven't let my mind go there uh, to be honest with you. Um, I think it would create a lot of challenges. Um, I, I would have a lot of concerns about that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'd have to sit down and think it through more specifically. Um, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing you always try to, to think about is just like the, the year round um, calendar slash approach you have towards your de the development of your team and, and their bodies and, and the, the load that they have and the stress level that they have on their bodies in both contact as well as the weight room and the running and balance and all that and, and everything. So um, gosh, there's just so many different variables involved um, with that, that I think would take a whole lot of, 
um, a lot of planning to make that a go. But I mean, I've heard it obviously discussed, say, hey, that's the last, you know, ditch effort we would try to be able to, to, to salvage a season. So I'm, I'm assuming that will be discussed for sure. Uh, but no, we haven't had really any uh, very specific discussions about that. I just know in my mind as I've thought about it a little bit, you know, I, I just do see a lot of challenges, you know, for, for making that a possibility. But, but like anything else, hey, we, we're pretty creative individuals. And, and we, uh, when your back's against the wall, you have, you have a tendency just to kind of find a way to figure it out, you know. And, uh, but at the end of the day, though, it's got to always be about what's best for our players, their development, their safety, and, and what makes sense in that way. Thanks. You're welcome.